Well, it's not exactly a Monday or Tuesday. It's the total opposite of Friday. So, sh Friday does not roll off the tongue as well. <laughs> well, it's the first episode back. So, July 1st. Well, welcome back, folks. Here's what happened last month for the top news, I guess. But I was burnt out. I was really burnt out after the ship TVP marathon. But I still play my daily missions and just... An hour or two of World of Tanks and I just took a break. I finished or refinished Bioshock, all three Bioshocks, uh, Shadow Warrior. I don't know. I played through a lot of games in the last month. I just like mm, don't want to play through World of Tanks well, more than I have to for the daily missions and the progression system with the battle pass points, but whatever. So. We're back, but let's talk about the biggest news for June in World of Tanks. Uh, starting first, Steel Hunter made a return for a whole month, and I haven't touched it for a whole month. <laughs> There's no point of me playing Steel Hunter, or for anybody to play Steel Hunter, personal opinion, but you don't get extra Battle Pass points if you finish like top 5, you get like 10 or something or 7 it's not really worthwhile not even close I mean if you play front lines you at least get 20 if you complete a stage right so that's a plus in the beginning since the beginning stages are relatively short so you get more battle pass points you can like quit after like stage 10 or 7 or something I don't know but yeah there's no point of playing steel hunter you don't get a tier 9, you don't get tokens, you don't get any extra personal reserves. You're just like, no. Don't need to play it. Whatever, so, whole month of it. Haven't touched it. <laughs> okay. Come back doing a few videos or a couple of videos in the middle of June for the Object 780. Like I said, it's a good medium tank. It's not exactly a heavy tank, but eh, people complain. Oh, it's not as good as a Chieftain or... 279 early, yada yada. Come on, guys. They're, they're selling it, in a sense. <laughs> it's not gonna be that good. I mean, it's gonna be, you know, special, but it's not gonna be OP. But whatever. It's still fun. And the skin for the Object 780 is practically 10 out of 10, in my opinion. Because even though you get a 3D skin with your own customization and stuff, which is great already. It also gets three different styles depending on the weather. So it gets the winter, desert, and urban camos changing with it too. So even though it's a 3D skin, it also has varied elements. So that's pretty nice. I mean, all 3D skins are practically the same. Like, they don't change. If it's desert or winter, they don't change. But that skin does. So the first. So I have to give it a... 10 out of 10 but hey it's a funny event so also when you think of it wargaming has evolved into blowing their load instead of dragging a exciting event for a week or two so originally for black market the whole event will last about 10 days or so right and it's not exactly like blowing your load in the first couple of days. People will come back later on to see what the new deals are. And it's not that, you know, quick. It's more drawn out in a sense. But now, for this year, we got the auction thing, which only lasted like five days or something. <laughs> or just five available options. And we got the... Uh, the caravan thing which it's so random and people get pissed off really quick so also 780 so yeah the event for the extra skin thing ends in the first I don't know few hours so it's like blowing your load real quick and people just get tired and just lose attention after a few hours or just after the first day or so so yeah, Wargaming has developed a teenager 
a take on events, I guess, instead of old season take, I guess. I don't know. Weird comparison. Moving on. <laughs> uh, recon mission came back. So nice, like I said. Not the same old games, but only six new maps. Uh, there were three more that they're going to test. So the other two are going to likely come out this year. So one is the tropical one with the beach, which is very nice. A nice change of settings. I appreciate it. And the one that looks like mines turned 180 degrees, but elongated in a sense. So, okay. I mean, you still fight for the hill, but it's like mines. Meh, I guess. So you'll see the maps. One will be coming out at the end of um, summer and one for New Year's. But hey, at least some maps are better than no maps. So that's good. Also, the progression reset for the rewards. So you actually could get the rewards twice, even though it's like a few uh, premium days and personal reserves. But hey, better than nothing, I guess. All right. Well, moving on. Let's see. I have a list of stuff. HD models and some of the stats are ready for tier 7 through 10 of the Italian tank destroyers. So, we're likely going to see the Italian tank destroyers first, then the Czech tank destroyers. Don't know why they introduced the ship TVP first without introducing the Vipera and just totally skip out on the Czech tank destroyer line, but okay, I guess. I mean, it's more important for the Italians? Well, yeah, I guess all of them are more like paper tanks, but why the Italian gets favored? I'm trying to think of a nation that got introduced a premium first, but got totally delayed by another tech tree before releasing. Uh, Japanese heavy? <laughs> That's a while ago. We usually get the, the premium right before the tech tree, so usually that works out. But for something like the Japanese Tiger 1, we got it like way a little bit earlier than the actual reveal of the tech tree. But I'm still thinking, so I guess we'll see the Italian tank destroyers coming up. Alright, but <laughs> Italian TVs, practically E4s running around. <laughs> it's heavy tanks with... Limited Turtiverse, practically. So, okay. I mean, haul down, gun depression, turret armor. Ugh. The usual heavy tank shit. <laughs> well, moving on to more recent news. So, yesterday, there were changes on the super test. So, there were nerfs to the crime logging line. For the mill, for the Kranwagen, they nerfed the mobility and the speed of the vehicle because obviously the Kranwagens are pretty good. <laughs> you see them dominating the rank battle mode practically, and yeah, it's kind of I don't know. I mean, I already got a nerf in a sense, changing the four round clip to three round clip with more alpha and more DPM. But they nerfed the mobility once, they're going to nerf it again, so I don't know. I mean, that's what happens with a vehicle with strong turret armor. Practically no weak spots unless you shoot the commander cupola, which is a very small sliver. So you're not going to shoot that. And 12 degrees gun depression. <laughs> it's not going to work out well. So... What's the last time? When was the last time there was a nerf? Wargaming usually don't nerf stuff. They just buff like underperforming stuff. So they buff the American heavy tanks, increase the more DPM basis of the vehicles and the mobility and uh, gun dispersion and stuff. But usually they don't nerf stuff. Nerf main normal tech tree tanks as often. So. When was the last nerf I'm trying to think of? Was it the Object 268 version number 4? 
or the actual crown volume, nerfing the 4 round clip to 3 round clip. But that happened at least like 2 plus years ago. So Wargaming usually just don't nerf stuff unless it's blatantly OP. Like the Object 268 version number 4 originally. So you can play that thing like a freaking fast Doom Turtle <laughs> with no drawbacks. <laughs> so yeah, obviously you're gonna nerf that stuff. But that was like a while ago. At least 3 years I think. 2 or 3 years. Yeah, whatever. So we'll see what happens. Uh, they nerfed the Crown Rocket line, they're going to buff the AMX M4 line by gun performance, not mobility. So AMX 65T is still pretty slow. <laughs> Same goes with like AMX Libertes, M4 Libertes and some of the uh, 1952 and 54 AMX M4s, but eh, we'll see, I guess. It's, it's going to have better side armor, yay, like 65mm to 80, which is not going to help much. <laughs> so, yeah, I could see AMX M4 being underperforming, but eh, I guess, I mean, not many players play it. I have it, but it's, it's okay, it's like a larger M103 if you're in the mood. <laughs> if you're in the mood for it, which is not good. It has its weak side armor, large profile, other stuff that are garbage, so... Yeah, okay. Also, they talk about changing the American Heavy Tanks again, so... We're going to see what happened, but... They nerfed the T-29, buffed the T-32, buffed the M-103, buffed the E-5 slightly, or didn't change much, but... E5 still has the garbage tumor, so that was the original nerf from the awesome tumor. Now it's terrible tumor, so it had terrible tumor to awesome tumor to terrible again. <laughs> so uh, we'll see what happens with American Heavy Tank change. I have all of them, again, like I said. T32 is probably one of my favorite tier 8s, just because how thick the freaking turret is. It's one of the thickest. I think it might be the strongest turret, other than the Commander Cupola. So, and the Commander Cupola is a big ass troll too. All right, fine, whatever. Um, 1.17.1 is currently on the common test iteration number two. So the biggest change is some bug fixes mostly. They added the Vipera. The Italian tank destroyer at tier 8, the premium one, but we'll take a look later on. So, obviously, you get to see the E4 ness of the vehicle, but it's a heavy tank. Looks pretty modern, so it doesn't look like a freaking Japanese heavy tank. That's disgusting. It looks like a Leopard 1, except it's a tank destroyer with a large turret. So, kind of a modern look, too. Not bad. So, we'll take a look. There's a new skin for the Type 59 called the Old Man. It's alright, but some of the skin modders do a better job, so... Okay, whatever, I guess. Uh, there's the addition of this year's um, Anniversary Reward and Holiday Ops Reward. So, the Anniversary Reward should be the Lago M38, the Swedish light tank at Tier 3. And the New Year's Reward should be the Chinese copy of the T26 so the Russian T26 Chinese version there's a Chinese version of everything so <laughs> okay great and that's practically it so news is actually not that you know I guess abundant in terms of a cornucopia of Jew that's a fancy word but yeah, there's not that much news, that's what I'm trying to say, <laughs> for this month, or last month, but uh, it's currently summer sales on Steam, on Ep Epic Game Stores, or GOG, or GOG, or however you pronounce it, so yeah, choose to spend money other than World of Tanks. I highly recommend Highly, if you can run it, well, you don't, you don't have to run it well, but I highly recommend you getting a copy of Red Dead Redemption 2. 
I got it last year for summer, and I just like, I'll stop playing World of Tanks for a few, few weeks, and it turns to a month or two. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's like one of my, that's my, my second favorite game, Red Dead. The first one is obviously Witcher, but what's my third favorite game? Ooh, that is a hard one. First is The Witcher 3. Second one is Red Dead 2. Third one... Oh, shit. The, the game that I spent most time in... Maybe Oblivion? <laughs> but that was like 10 years ago. 10 plus years ago. Actually, that was more like 15 years ago. When I was in high school. <laughs> Holy crap, yeah. Obviously, The Elder Scroll 3 Oblivion is... Elder Scroll 4 Oblivion, not Morrowind. It's pretty good. It's all janky and glitchy and all hell, but hey. It's, <laughs> it's alright. So, moral of the story is, save your money by not spending like 20 bucks on the Tiger 2 or E75 skin. Why does it cost like 20 bucks? Holy shit! That's a full copy of Red Dead 2! For a Tiger 2 skin? That is... No! That is ridiculous! No way! Why? Also for the E75 skin, I have no idea. It costs way too much for a freaking skin in World of Tanks. Like way too freaking much. But... I didn't get it. I, I guess a lot of players who like the Tiger or E75 got it. Okay. Okay. Um, they were trying to give it out for Tank Fest last weekend, but I think a lot of players got disappointed because they show off the good prizes like the Type 59 Gold or the Borresk E25 first. And then they show you like a few days of premium time or some. Uh, tank fest camo or something and that's pretty garbage so I got all one day of premium time so I cannot complain but already have mostly everything actually I already have everything every premium on offer so the only thing I get is gold compensation but that's not gonna happen <laughs> all right but um yeah spend your money don't spend your money on world of tanks spend it on something actually useful that's on sale like Witcher 3 is only like 10 bucks right now. That's insane. The full copy. The full deluxe all DLC copy is only 10 bucks for The Witcher 3. Now granted, it's been like 8 years or so. But it's an amazing game. Way ahead of its time for The Witcher 3. So yeah, definitely get a copy if you haven't had the chance to play Witcher 3. Also Red Dead. Red Dead is like 20 bucks. Super worth. No question about it. Like Oblivion is like what? Three dollars? <laughs> Granted it's been like 15 plus years but or 20 years when I think about it. Ugh. But still. Yeah. If, you, if you're going to play through a janky garbage ass game that's actually pretty decent with only like three voice actors. <laughs> Play Elder Scroll uh, 4 Oblivion, so. Or you can play Skyrim. Skyrim is like $5 on Steam, which is nuts. So. Yeah, I've been playing through some of my old games, trying to finish achievements on my Steam account, but. <laughs> $20 for a Tiger 2 skin. You gotta be ridiculous. <laughs> Alright. Uh, well, there you go, folks. It's your Friday, I guess. So, these two clips of decent games I had with my Sherman Revatorize on the... What's it called? Canyon map? And this Italian map called Aquila. Aquila? Aqua something? I don't know, but... This is actually wrote, uh... Rated... And wrote as one of the best out of all the six maps for a recon mission for some reason okay but um it's all right kind of feels like i mean like a himmelsdorf map but it got punched in the middle 
into a crater in a sense so it's not like well you have the hill to the right you have the hill to the left now but ah uh, what other map is like this one hmm it's also like the new winter map for recon mission not the one with the blimp the one for last year where there's two sides to the map but one is um one is a large cliff to the right side and one is like a valley to the left uh, i guess it's not favorable so they did not include it this year but hey sherman revitalize needs a buff prototype super sherman i guess but <laughs> shooting at a flipped over object 704 <laughs> The stupid stairs will trip you up, man. I mean, so annoying. When we try to side scrape with the uh, heavy tanks on the corners, it just annoyed the shit out of you. <laughs> when you flip your vehicle on the stupidest, smallest steps there is, just piss you right off. <laughs> oh god. Oh, yeah. Well, there you go, folks. We're back to making regular videos, hopefully. So, sh Friday for now, but you know, hopefully July will be a lot better. Hopefully. I doubt it. Oh, forgot to mention. Um, if you have been watching Twitch, you should have gotten about eight weeks worth of coins now. At least that's what I got. So, just one more week for the Chafee Hellcat. And about two more weeks or three more weeks for the Panther, the Britney Panther or the Japanese Tiger Tank, if you're missing out. But hey, it's like tank rewards, but it takes like two months and a half for tier six, which is, I mean, better than nothing, but not as good as the original. So, all right. Well, there you go, folks. I'll catch you guys next week, but I'll do the common test preview as well as the nerfs and buffs in the super test coming up but thank you guys for watching and we're back so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and i'll see you guys next time peace